All right, we're here with Jimmy McIlvain at the PDGA National Tour Delaware Disc Golf Challenge. Jimmy, how's it going today? Hot. <laughs> That's all I got. It's hot and humid. Gosh. You know, for someone that hasn't seen Iron Hill with their own eyes, how would you describe it? Uh, it's a grind. I mean, that's, you know, I think any of the players will tell you that. It's, uh, it's a little bit different. I mean, I, I don't think any of the players step up and don't think they can birdie a hole, but it definitely becomes – uh, shot after shot after shot. There's no lazy shots, you know. Uh, the footing can be tough. Uh, I think some of the players would complain a little bit about that. But, I mean, uh, the putting greens can be a little bit unstable. So I think there's a little bit different going on there. Uh, other than that, I think it's pretty fair. I mean, it's a wooded course. Uh, but I don't think anybody comes in going, oh, there's just too much stuff going on. So... Nice. That's what I think of the course. I mean, I hope not. I hope I'm right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Some uh, changes this year a little bit. Um, can you break those down? Yeah. So we lost four trees on hole one, like two years ago, just before the 2019 NT, and we had to go from a par four to a par three. Uh, a lot of guys really said they'd rather play the par four because it, the par three sort of only gave, you know, I mean, it was 450 feet, and if you couldn't reach it around the corner, it became a little tough for some people. Uh, so we tried the best we could to clean up the four trees that fell, uh, create a new green and pushed it back a little bit. Uh, we're also trying to add a couple of OB spots. The reason was behind that though was because, not necessarily to make the course more difficult, but with the spectators, we felt that this year might get a little bit crazy in here. Uh, last, uh, the last two times we had an NT here, we did have some issues with, you know, some of the times, Spectators getting in the way, so we try to cut that back a little bit more, knowing that we're going to probably have almost double the amount of spectators. So, nice. good problems to have for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's <laughs> we'll find out when we get done if it was a good one. I talk, you know, just speak about the amount of work that it goes into preparing for one of this, and, and the the pride and community aspect out here of people, you know, working and and getting it ready to go. Yeah. So normally. So the course is a little over 10,000 feet. Almost everything's in the woods. Uh, the park takes care of everything outside of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, any trimming inside the course is pretty much all volunteer work. On a normal normal year with just regular tournaments and things, we're probably running 2,000 volunteer hours a year. Uh, we put in new tees this year, so with that, getting ready for the NT, we're probably pushing closer to five to 6,000 volunteer hours. Nice. Uh, and that might be actually on the low side. Nice. You know, what does that mean to you as a long-time proponent in disc golf to see the community kind of rally together and, and, and put in the work to make it look like it does right now? It's, you know, it's beautiful out here. Uh, it, it's a lot because it is a public park. I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, I think this may be, I don't know, but I know it's one of the only – you know, in the Elite Series that is actually in a public park, you can come anytime and play the same layout, you know, pretty much anytime. Uh, the, there's no fees to get into the park. There's no way, you know, to charge for spectators and things like that. So we do operate on a little bit different than anything that's got any type of private thing going on at all. So that makes it, you know, a little bit different here. You know, going back to 2019, Matt Bell from the Chase Card, is this course kind of set up for the, that kind of uh, winner to come from deep, come from behind, and, and finish like that? I think – so I, th I think that – okay. So I, I really believe that, you, that almost every player out here walks up to the tee pad thinking they're going to get a birdie out here. And they, they practice it that way. I think they know how they're going to do it. And if everything doesn't – and if everything falls into place – you know, you get 60 good shots, that's your score. You walk out of here round after round after round. And if that doesn't happen, it doesn't go down that way. I mean, there's just no easy dumb shots here. There's no, okay, I got the easy little 150-foot layout. Well, it's not because now you may have to go around. It may only be one tree. But after a while, that gets old, man, you know. And I, and I, think, I think Ricky did an interview right after that day, and he said that, you know, time he got to the back nine he had lost confidence in a shot i don't think you can play here if you're not confident in every single shot and matt hit fire that day i mean it was you know it is what you know i think it was cool coming off the chase car like that 
Nice. Yeah, I think uh, another quote we heard from that year was beautiful but brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Is that fi- fitting? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, like I said, uh, uh, most fairways I think are fair. I think there are a couple of really tight ones. I mean, I think the shorter par fours, like most of the places, I think if you go to most way golf, the par threes are usually the tighter, short little holes. And here, I think that throws some people because the par threes are usually longer and much tougher. And the par fours, there's like three or four of them, like hole nine, hole 12, uh, even hole one. I mean, if you get to the corner, you're just throwing another shot to the corner. It's not much more than, I mean, it's like I said, though, did you place that one and the next one and the next one? And it gets old. Like I quickly, like if that's the way you're playing it, so I think that you guys start running for things they necessarily shouldn't be running for. Nice. All right, let's hear some predictions. Any, any score, numbers? I, I mean, who do you look to, to play hot out here? we got a bunch of names that, that keep coming back. Yeah, I mean, so Ricky has finished second. He's won once and finished second like four times, at least three times. Uh, so he knows the course. He knows how to play the course. James Conrad's been coming here since before most people knew who James Conrad was. So, I mean, he knows the course. Same thing with Matt. Same thing with Calvin. Like, Cal- my daughter, like, is, like, a big fan of Calvin's, and it was like, that's because Calvin was here before, you know, everyone else knew Calvin. So those guys that are still here, I think they all have an excellent chance to win. Uh, I'm not, you know, uh, there are a couple other reigning champions out here, like you said, with Matt Bell, uh, Bradley Williams. Bradley's beaten uh, Ricky out here in a playoff. So, I don't know. I think with the guys who've been here a lot, I would give at least 10 of them a chance to win. Uh, and then there's a lot of new faces. Like, I, I believe this is Matty O's first time here. So, I, look, you know, Woods Golfer, I'm not going to take anybody away. And it's hot and humid out here. So, someone like Matty can be able to physically hang in here. And then with the women, I mean, you've got to go with either Katrina or uh, Sarah right now. So because they, between them, they've won five times and come in second and numerous. So. Awesome. We're set for a, a solid weekend here for a beautiful track. Thank you for all you've done to get the course ready. Uh, Jim and Yakovane, appreciate it. Thanks. Todd Line of the PDGA, our events support and training manager. Todd, how's it going out here in Delaware? I think Jimmy already wrapped that up. It's a little warm up here. Um, I love coming here. I absolutely love this course. It's a beautiful track. Um, 
you don't have to fuss about the course too much so it actually makes our job a little easier and there's only three OBs on the course so we just get to come out look at the trees say oh yeah they're still big the fairway still look great we're ready to rock and roll it's been um it's been a number of months since the last nt um and these courses uh here, well especially this course in delaware looks quite a bit different than the the nt courses from earlier in the season um how does that change your job and and what do we have to look forward to uh in the golf this weekend yeah i mean uh, i guess our the last nt we were at was ddo in emporia and yeah going from country club to Iron Hill is pretty much as polar opposite as you can get. You know, um, out there, spectators are easy and we are worried about OB lines. And here, the OB lines are easy and we're worried about the spectators. You know, where do you put them? How do you move them around? You know, guys have to wait on the tee pad for a few minutes while we're running down the fairway, telling everybody to get in the woods and get off the fairway. And, um, but in the end, you know, it's still, it's still golf and hopefully they put on a good show that you know the players put on a good show they have a good time let it um come through on the coverage of when the shots are good and how much they're enjoying their time and even though like jimmy said it's a grind out here it's impossible not to have a good time on this course it's just too much of a beautiful course to um well to have a bad time even if you're throwing 80 shots you're you're moving from a role as the events coordinator into this event support and training manager. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the new role and how your background in uh, helping to run these these big elite events um, is going to help you in, in the new role? Yeah, sure. It's um really a uh, response by the PDGA to the incredible growth that we've been seeing. Let me pull up real quick a couple numbers. Uh, we had four. In 2019, 4,651 sanctioned tournaments, and that was our all-time record. So far this year, we're at 5,800. So that's 1,200 more tournaments than our previous high. And, you know, our membership numbers, we are currently at 95,501 active members as of this morning. Those are mind-blowing numbers for the PDGA as an organization. And... What that means is there's more players, that means there's more tournaments, that means there's more TDs, and the way that I see our job as the PDGA, or at least for my money, local C-tier TDs are the bread and butter of the entire disc golf world. You know, you need to have local organizers, local clubs, local TDs that are running these 5,800 events, and we at the PDJ need to enable them to do it, to do a good job. So the event support team is really kind of what Big Dog and Amber used to do. And over the course of one month, they hired me over from the events team, hired Mike Sullivan on from the board of directors, and hired Rebecca Duffy on, former board of president of the board, actually. So now it's five of us who our job is to educate TDs, uh, help them through uh, running tournaments, help them with rules calls if they need it, and eventually break into more training, more seminars, more um, proactive education of tournament directors and of players. And, you know, this might have been needed a couple years ago, but it's certainly needed now. And we're uh, working pretty hard to do that. So my personal experience is you know, local TD, you know, C tiers up to A tiers. And then a couple of years on the road with Mike and Sean doing national tours and majors. And then also kind of, I think they called me the mascot for the tech team. So I kind of have that intersection of all three, small events, big events, and the technology background to hopefully do a good job of either explaining details to new TDs of how they need to um, set up their events or being able to provide feedback to the tech team saying, a lot of TDs are running into this problem. Let's see what we can do to fix it, you know, fix it proactively before it becomes a problem and make their lives easier for them. Because that's, you know, the growth of the sport is local TDs, local players, you know, nobody's going on to the tour until they win their first amateur C tier. You're playing C tiers for a while, you're winning those, then he moves up to some A tiers, and every player out here 
started off by winning C tiers. And those are the, the bread and butter, the base of the pyramid for the entire sport. We, uh, we just wrapped up uh, world championship season. The last one was yeah. Ann Worlds in Orlando. Um, what's, the, uh, what's the event team's feeling about how the championship season went? Tiring is really the way it went. I haven't been home for a day yet, or on a weekend day yet this month. So just last week was Am Worlds in Orlando, which was really a great event. You know, the TD was kind of joking around, but also very serious, saying if we don't get any complaints about not having enough water on the course, it'll be a successful tournament. And end of the week, no complaints about not enough water. So that's the single most important thing for being in Orlando in the middle of August. But... In addition to that, it went off without a hitch, and it was great. And then the week before that, Masters Worlds in Johnson City. I think we pretty much left Johnson City saying, can we just host all the majors here? God, the weather's great. <laughs> We're up in the mountains. We, you know, a fantastic mix of courses. Uh, the Masters Worlds, those players had a fantastic time there. I've seen only positive feedback out of those. So, I mean, it's been, a, as with every summer, it's a long summer. But we're coming out feeling uh, pretty happy. I know you, you don't get to pick favorites out here, um, but um, what are your goals for the weekend, and what uh, what does success look like uh, in your eyes? I kind of give my, my stock answer. You know, if any little kid asks me who my favorite player is, you know, they're all my favorite. And what I hope for is a good, fair competition without any controversy. And, you know, it's kind of a joke, but it's also true. You know, that's the most important thing from our perspective is – a fairly competed uh, tournament with hopefully no big controversies, no rules calls, no uh, no screaming and yelling about something, but just a good, good, honest competition. And as far as the players go, I think everybody knows who the uh, who the Woods players are, and but also you know the Open players seem to shock us every time. We go into all the Woods courses saying, well, it has to be one, two, or one of these three players, and then all of a sudden one of the big arms shows up and uh, rocks the wooden course as well. So, like Jimmy was saying earlier, it's, it's kind of anybody's ball game. You know, even if you play good for 40, 50 holes, you know, you can blow up on a few holes out here. You get stuck behind some trees and have come out with some triple bogeys or something, and at that point all bets are off. Who knows who's going to win at that point? There is um, a, a lot of media out here this weekend. Uh, six production crews. We have DGN covering it live. Um, I know the players um, enjoy it when there are cameras on the course um, to you know let spectators uh, get a peek at, at, at what they're doing out here. Uh, does the events team feel the same way? Does, is, is it rewarding to know that your hard work is is being seen by viewers around the world? Yeah, we love it. You know, there's, we are absolute fans and, you know, we watch all the videos ourselves as well, you know, sometimes to look back at if there was a weird thing that happened on the course, but also just because we're fans and we want to see good golf as well. And when I'm on the ground, I'm not paying attention to the golf, you know, I'm too busy fighting with spectators or something, but you know, the more media coverage, the better. I mean, I love the fact that you guys set up, um, three men's, three women's cards every day. That's fantastic. And even going back to last week, I think you have the FA1 coverage from Amworlds is going to start coming out this week. So that's, is that a first time? I don't know. It might be. But it's great to see coverage of all divisions at, or a lot of divisions at all these different tournaments, a bunch of different styles of golf, a bunch of different faces that you might not have seen before. And in the end, it's all about you know, hashtag grow the sport. It's all about outreach. It's about getting in front of eyeballs and getting um, new players to see it, see if they like it, come out, try it on their own. PDG is Todd Lyon. Todd, thanks so much for your time. Yeah, thanks, guys.
here with Matt Bell, defending champion here at the Delaware Disc Golf Challenge. Matt, um, we've been talking about your win in 2019 quite a bit. Uh, can you just run us through uh, that last round from your perspective and, and, and how that went down? Uh, yeah, uh, it was all uh, pretty pretty close between the top two cards going in the final round. So we all kind of knew it could be anybody's game. And, <clears throat> you know, after the front nine, Ricky had kind of uh, moved away from the field by a few and uh, – had a slow start to the back nine and didn't really think it could happen until I made that par putt on 15 from a edge of circle two and the crowd just cheered in a way that I felt like I had a chance at that point. They cheered so loud. So figured if I got a few more birdies, uh, anything could happen. And yeah, check the scores after I threw my drive on 18 and realized Ricky was about to bogey 17, and he'd need to birdie 18 if I got up and down. So uh, put my approach close, made the putt, and uh, Ricky ended up not getting the birdie. So that's, that's kind of how it went down at the time for me. What does it feel like coming back here to Iron Hill um, after a year off, but still as a defending champion? Um, does it give you, uh, does it feel different than, than an event you show up to? Uh, yeah, Iron Hill for sure in particular because it's been my favorite course on tour since I first played here uh, when it was first in A tier, I believe. So uh, I've been coming here for about five years, and it's always been a special place for me too. So to come here, uh, having won the last national tour here, it, it means a lot to me. How's your game uh, feeling at the moment? How, how have your practice rounds been going? Uh, well, I've... I found a, a driver to replace the one I, I won with in 2019 because I lost my, my kind of go-to uh, for this course and uh, found one that's flying even better. You know, in practice rounds, I'm getting to my spots uh, a little bit easier. Um, so having that disc with me is going to give me all the confidence I feel like I needed uh, two years ago. So, um, um, it's, it's definitely key here to know – <clears throat> which side of the fairway to miss on. So um, that's kind of the challenge most players face is figuring out where your your bad shots are going to go. Um, when things go wrong out here, it's, it's really important. So uh, just knowing that, um, you know, is and sticking to a good game plan for where your game is at, you know, sticking for a game plan where you're – what it's like this year because every year is different. So – I have a good game plan for that, and uh, that should help a lot. Uh, this is the first year with uh, full live coverage here uh, at the challenge. Um, what do you what do you think it's going to be like uh, stepping onto the first tee with uh, with live coverage for the first time? Uh, well, I'm just finding that out now, so that's really cool. Um, I think that's huge for for the sport for people to be able to to watch that from start to finish, and you know, just be. Uh, connected with what we're doing out here at home and you know feeling the same energy we're feeling so i think that's an awesome thing what are uh, what are gonna be some of the bellwethers for you this uh this week if what what needs to click in order for you to succeed here um i think just being able to get off the the tee clean um you know i think uh making sure you're getting as far as you can off the tee makes it a lot easier out here so, you know, trying to stay clean off the tee and uh, get the putter rolling in circle two, and that's usually what wins out here. So, Excellent. Um, you gave us some great uh, spots to, to go eat at in Santa Cruz. You got any recommendations out here in Delaware? Uh, I don't at the moment, but check back with me. My lady's coming down tomorrow, and uh, we're going to go to a Filipino place. Those are usually my favorites, so. Gonna go check that out tomorrow. Defending champion Matt Bell. Matt, good luck this week. Thanks for your time. Thank you.
we're back with the 2018 PDGA World Champion, Greg Barzi. Greg, how's it feeling today? Good, Hayden. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Awesome. It's a little warm out here, but... You know, yeah, it is. It's a little sweltering. Um, you know, you've actually been here once before, but it, it was a pretty crazy week. So why don't you, why don't you take, it, take us back to your first trip to Iron Hill and, and what led to that? Uh, yeah, I stayed up at my buddy Evan's place up in Vermont after, after I won the Worlds for a couple of days and, uh, you know, made my phone calls the, the day after and then shut off my phone for a day or two and just really got to enjoy up there, kind of just uh, come back to earth in a sense, right? I mean, there was a, a lot of emotion coming after 25 years of playing and then finally winning a world. So, um, and then uh, got a hold of Philo, rode on down in the in the old whatever whatever Philo calls his van. I don't even know what to call it. I think the coach house, I think. So I uh, rode down here with him last time. And so yeah, I was kind of in a different a different place last time I played this course. I really uh, I would have liked to take the week off. But I mean, I was already out on the road. Might as well just go to another tournament, you know. So that's been your mentality from the jump, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another tournament. We're on the road. Let's do it. Yeah. Nice. Well, back here at this, uh, you know, beautiful track. Uh, what was your first or second first impressions out here? We got ten holes in yesterday before uh, we ran out of water. I just I came straight off the plane and, and played ten, and and then I just got a practice round in this this morning. So. I feel really good with the course. I mean, it's tough. This is a really, really difficult track to, to be able to put yourself in position on every hole, so you're going to have to scramble. Um, even your good shots, you might just be a little out of position. And there's a lot of stuff out here that you don't really think of when, you're, when you think about hitting a fairway. I mean, you can hit a, a few of these fairways and just have, you know, jagged rocks all over the place. So running up can be really difficult. So today I just tried to, you know, get my bearings with the course, you know, find my distances on, on specific shots, see where I want to, where I want to land the disc, how I want to move it through the air, and so I feel really good. Nice. Yeah. You know, the schedule being so packed this year, you're kind of, you know, picking spots to play like everyone else. You know, how how crucial do you think that is in today's world in in the game? Uh, just to maybe not grind it out every week, like you know, 15, 20 years ago, but to right. take those little mental and physical breaks. Uh, totally. I think it's really important. I mean, when I started touring 15 years ago, it was as many as I could play, and probably up till about eight years ago it was as many as I can play. Um, I took Idlewild off last week just uh, in consideration of the heat um, and to get some stuff done at home in Texas. So drove back down south and then, and then caught the plane here. It was really, really nice to be at home. Um, and, and get some life stuff done, um, working on the house, thinking about, you know, just other stuff in life. And I think it's really important to uh, have that perspective as well. You know, when I come back out here, I'm really focused on playing a, a good tournament this week. I'm in a decent standing on the national tour points, so I'd really like to add on to that and um, sew myself up for, for a good finish on the national tour. You know, what, what would, advice would you give to an, an up-and-comer that's trying to grind it out on the tour? I mean, grind, take a break, uh, take care of yourself, any of those, those yeah, kind of things? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's everything in moderation, right? Like, there's some weeks, there's some stretches where, you know, you like to get in that groove and play golf as, as much as you can and, and maybe get to the next course and really get your bearings on the next one um, as, soon as, the, as soon as the tournament's done. But I'm really, I'm really not opposed to taking time off. Um, the toughest part is is dealing with your headspace when you are taking time off. When you feel like, oh, I could be out there playing and and you know getting you know getting my game really wired in. That can sometimes be a little bit detrimental when your you know your body's kind of you know hitting a wall. Sometimes it's good to take a break. Um, I also am a big I think a, a big proponent to success is to enjoy what you're doing and be able to go out and you know maybe go find go find a place to to eat or find a little cool part of town and just walk around and really enjoy where you are i think that's one of the the, the best parts about my job is that i get to go to a bunch of cool places and and find you know some places that are maybe off the map that even you know travel bloggers or stuff they don't they don't find that stuff so meet up with a local find somebody that knows a good place to eat and go enjoy yourself I mean, how, how's the game feeling right now? What are some things you're working on, some things you're focusing on? Yeah, I, uh, I got to set up my bag specifically for this course this week. Um, I feel like I did a pretty good job. There's a couple that I'm going to dole out. 
Um, I'm throwing my old Scorpius out here, just something that I can weave through the woods, and then and then I'm also throwing a lot of road runners off the tee. I'm not going to be throwing as many fast drivers off the tee pads here, just in consideration of the kicks. The faster the disc goes, the further it kicks in the woods. So, and I'm also really comfortable with my roadies right now. I think I just shot a seven under in practice with a couple missed putts um, and and uh, one bogey. So. I think a number like that will definitely get me sniffing the top 10 after the first round. And um, there are a couple holes that, you know, you're just a little off and you're out of position. So I think scrambling is, is a big part and staying calm when you have to scramble is going to be really important out here. Um, when, you, when you're not in position, you just got to make the best of the bad situation and, and get your pars, you know, stay off the bogeys. I think I saw, I saw just that you were throwing recently in the shark. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about maybe that underrated disc? Yeah, the Shark. I mean, this is a great disc. I mean, it's, you know, it's the tried and true, old school, uh, mid-range, you know, kind of before the rock. I've got a first run champion edition one, and it flies fantastic. I can throw it hard and go straight, you know, slight fade at the end, very neutral flyer. If I put it on hyzer, it'll stay on hyzer. You know, if I turn it over, it'll stay turned over for a good ways until it kind of flattens out, so... Um, my game's kind of based on that as well, right? Neutral flyers and then a fade. You know, I've got a pretty well-rounded game, forehand, backhand. So that's why I love the road runner for my backhand long shots. And, you know, my eagle kind of just dances in between. I can throw a forehand, backhand, whatever. But the shark's been a nice addition. I look forward to working that in a little more. Nice. You know, and speaking of disc, and you mentioned it, the eagle tour series dropped and like is selling like crazy. So you know, what does that mean to you to, to see it, you know, just – disappear like that as quickly as it has been. Oh, man, it's a blessing. I think the fans are really going to enjoy this disc. I I can't thank Innova enough for uh, for listening to my requests, uh, getting getting some bright colors. I know the last couple of years weren't as bright. They were more earth tones, and those are hard to find. These ones are nice, bright orange sherbet, and uh, I'm calling it Trix yogurt for the purple and pink ones. Um, this disc is flying fantastic. I literally parked two holes today, absolute pin job within five feet. Um, so I've thrown it about 30 times now. It literally went right into my bag. I'm feeling comfortable with it. So um, big thanks to all the fans that, that picked one up. Um, I hope, really hope you guys enjoy it. If you want to hashtag Bars Me Empire Eagle, um, that way I can search all your videos and posts. I'd really appreciate that too. You know, national tour picking back up this week. Um, you know, describe your, your first national tour win or maybe the first national tour you went and played and what, the, what it was like. Well, it was the same tournament. <laughs> not at the same year but it was the same tournament uh, my first national tour i believe was 2004 masters cup in santa cruz and uh, i skipped 2005 to go to the prom uh, which was kind of a bummer but you know you only get one chance to be a senior in high school so um and then 2009 was yeah obviously you know the epic the indomitable the roller ace you know playing with climo and and Doss on his birthday, that was, uh, that was one of the most intense rounds I've ever played. You know, Nate and I both hit aces. So, you know, I, I think back on that tournament fondly. I, I think back to a lot of other national tours that I've had a really good run at. I think I've had, you know, five, six, seven runner-ups at national tours. I've had good success at these events. A uh, couple top fours over there, Brent Hambrick, um, being able to throw off the dam like all the legends, like, you know, Crazy John. I've heard all the stories. So, um I'm excited to come out here and test my skills. I think that's the most important thing for me is to just keep it cool when things go wrong, you know, keep keep plugging away. Of course, like this, everybody's going to have their struggles. So um, a good finish here will lock me up towards the end of the year. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm happy to be out here. Hey, what does the end of the year look like for you? What's, the, what's, what's on the schedule? Um, I'll be flying back to Texas after this week, and then I will be – Flying right back out to Boston on Thursday, getting ready for Maple Hill. I'll be going to Green Mountain. And I just got into uh, the NT finale down in Tennessee, so I'll be playing down there. And then the U.S. Open. Uh, depending on how the next two weeks go, we'll see if I can make it into the Pro Tour finals. I'm not sure. Um, a couple top fives might be able to squeak me in, but, you know, that's a tall order with, uh, with all the gamers out here. But those courses definitely suit me up. So um, after USDGC... Don't really have too many plans. Maybe a VPO at the end of the year, and then I'm hosting a couple events down in Texas in November. So, kind of uh, been gearing towards those. That's why I was at home last week to kind of get some stuff taken care of there. And but yeah, it's been a great season so far. I'm, uh, you know, I've only had a few good events, so I really want to end this one with a bang.
All right, Greg, appreciate the time. Good yeah. luck this weekend. Thank you, guys. Go PDGA. here with the reigning PDGA world champion and defending Delaware Disc Golf Challenge champion, Katrina Allen. Katrina, welcome back to Iron Hill. How's your week going? Um, good. How's my week here? Sorry, it's a little hard to um, Yeah, good. I actually took the last week off, so I um, had to get a little rest off, but um, was a little excited to get back and throw, and I love coming back here. I uh, love seeing Jimmy out on the course, so I'm excited. Uh, 2019, you had a, a three-stroke victory out here over Kristen Tatar. Uh, Kristen's not here. Uh, Paige is not here. You are coming out here as arguably the clear favorite. Um, how does that feel, and, and what are your expectations for yourself this, this week? Um, I'd say no expectations. Um, just got really good game plan. I know I've talked about this a lot, but just really making sure I'm picking the right disc, picking the right angle, and focusing on the run-up. Um, especially with the new tee pads out here. Um, and so not really thinking about all that, being the favorite or those people not showing up or, you know, uh, good luck to Kristen at the Estonian Open. But, um, yeah, took a nice week off, so skip back and hopefully be refreshed mentally and enjoy that process. It's a little bit hotter and more humid out here than we might have expected uh, this time of the year. Yeah. Um, what do you? And this is a, a very physically challenging course. Uh, what are your plans to uh, to keep cool and, and physically uh, fresh throughout the weekend? Um, it's nice that we're mostly in the woods, so we. Although the humidity is apparent when you're in there, um, the shade is is very nice, and it's not as grueling as say we were on an open course. Um, so I'm just enjoying the shade. Um, of course, going to hydrate, um, don't drink during the week, so I don't have to think about that. Um, so I think I got some advantages there, but I've talked about my fitness all year, and so I feel physically strong, which will be um, really nice on these hills and the long par fives coming down the stretch. So just focus on all those good things, and yeah, water will be, uh-oh. <laughs> Um, obviously, this season has been one, uh, a memorable one for you. Uh, the win in Utah was historic. Um, but you haven't been back in the winner's circle since Utah. Can you just tell us a little bit about what the second half of your season has been like, uh, the emotions you've gone through uh, since that win, and, and what it would mean to, to get another uh, Elite Series win here this weekend? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously, Worlds, and I'm still enjoying it. I think almost Every single day I'm being tagged in someone who's grabbed one of my two-time F7s or X3s. Um, and then my disc golf pin just came out. So um, that's been incredible that even like months later people are still celebrating. And um, and so, yeah. But um, to be 100% honest with you, um, had something um, kind of personal go on off the course. And I finally 
had to kind of take care of that and um, I was kind of carrying it on the course didn't really feel myself my positive you know um, yeah I was just going through a rough time and um, actually took care of it and I noticed how great my last two rounds at idol were um, and so that'll be nice to have that off my back and just enjoy that um, anyways yeah I know that's uh, <laughs> probably not what people want to hear or whatever but um, we are people with <laughs> personal problems, and um, for me personally, um, it can affect me on the course. And um, yeah, so I feel relieved, and I feel um, yeah, just like I'm back to myself, focusing on my game and uh, you know the gym and all those things. So, yeah, you're you're well known for having a very intentional routine. Um, you run, you take cold showers, you eat a uh, paleo diet. Uh, is there anything um, that you've added or changed to your routine in the last uh, few months? No. Uh, carnivore. Oh, <laughs> That's okay. I, I just eat like three things. But um, no, uh, same old, same old. Got up this morning, ran, lifted, stretched, went back, made a ribeye, had some bacon. Um, I guess the only thing I added is I uh, grabbed a couple um, finished lesson books offline um, off of Amazon. I was thinking since it's been a couple years since I've been there, my finish is getting rusty and uh, hopefully we'll get to play the European Open next year. And so that's kind of became part of my daily thing, um, which I feel like is a good distraction uh, during this last stretch because if you are out on the course, I think everyone's talking about how long this season has been and how grinding it's been. So just trying to, yeah, get through the grind. How is your game feeling um, this weekend, and how have your practice rounds been going? Um, good. I felt rusty on Monday, and then just felt like each day the rest was kind of falling off, and I'm feeling conf more confident. Uh, my timing, I mean, it's playing with uh, Ricky and Austin, and Ricky's like, wow, I can see your timing's coming back together. And so, yeah, I feel great, and um, I, I love playing here. I don't know. I don't think I really talk too much about liking or disliking courses, but I just enjoy being here and I'm excited. Tell us a little bit about the course and, and what appeals to you. Um, I feel like it's uh, wooded, but not super, super tight. There may be not a very, very specific line, but I like that kind of no matter where I'm at, it gives you an opportunity to scramble. It's a little bit more like the WR Jackson, which is one of my favorite wooded courses um, where distance and, you know, like I get to use my sidearm or, you know, my patent pending. Um, and even if I am like completely off the fairway, there's still ceilings and gaps to hit. So I always enjoy that. And uh, yeah, it's demanding all your shots for sure. Uh, anybody else in the um, in the women's field that uh, viewers should be looking out to perform well this weekend? Um, yeah, I mean Michelle Frazier just came off of uh, an incredible weekend. Um, Holly Finley plays great in the woods. Um, Holcomb and Heather both are very consistent. Um, trying to think who's all here. I don't want to say someone who's not here or leave someone out, but um, I mean, and with the uh, growth of women's disc golf, we never know who we're going to see, which is amazing. Speaking of the growth of women's disc golf, we've got uh, three post-production crews out here on FPO as well as DGN. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, what is it? What does it mean to the women playing out here to see so many cameras and, and to to know that they're getting the attention? Um, I mean. I think we're stoked. I think, um, like I think I've said this a couple of times, but if you look at other sports, um, you know, I know it's easy to look at the things we don't have as far as uh, female athletes, but I do feel like we get treated pretty equal. And if you look at the NBA and WNBA or other sports, that doesn't always happen. So I'm always appreciative of it for sure. Yeah. All right, Kat, uh, it's always a pleasure to watch you play. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Good? Okay.
here with Team Innova's Holly Finley. Uh, Holly, you've been out here for uh, a while practicing this Delaware course. How are you feeling, and, and what, how are you feeling about this course? Well, they changed the design since the last time we played it in 2019. Uh, we actually have a lot of short pads now, and the pin placements are the longer placements. Some of them are the ones that the men played. So it's actually almost an entirely new course I've had to learn this year. You know, the shots I used last time aren't the same. I'm relying on a lot of mids uh, instead of drivers. And I think it'll be a lot more scorable. So it'll be neat to see uh, how many ladies can come in under par this weekend. You're known as uh, one of the best woods players and one of the best putters um, on tour. Uh, how much are those strengths going to play in your favor this weekend? I think all of it. You know, that's really what I'm waiting on. I just need to make a few more putts, and I think I could win something big. You know, you can always go back and think, oh, it was this one shot or this other shot, but really you think about the putting green because you were right there, you almost had it, and it just slipped through the chains. You know, you've almost got the job done. So. I'm just really looking to tighten up my putting and hopefully it'll all come together and I can capture my first big win here at the Delaware Challenge. Um, can you can you bring us back to a few moments where you did feel like you had it and were frustrated by a missed putt? <laughs> uh, yeah, this last weekend we had the Pro Tour Silver Series at Stafford Open and I was in the lead after day one and it came up on a very unique green and most people would probably lay it up for safety there because it's extremely elevated built up on a triangle mound and you know i'm a very hard putter and i just ran it but i air meld so i was on the other side of the mound on the ground which is just basically another 50 footer uphill and then i did that again and you know i was right there putting for a birdie three it just seemed so close and next thing you know you've you've got a six uh so just things like that kind of, you know, replay in your mind of how you were right there on the edge of something and then just a few mistakes piled on top of each other and it slipped through your fingers. So I'm just really trying to clean up my game. I've tried to plan change my mentality and course management a little bit over the last year. You know, things that uh, I would normally go for everything inside 120. Um, and now I walk up and I'm like, do I, you know, do I really need to go for this? And what is the risk if I air mail? Because I putt very hard. And I also tried to change my putt a little bit, you know, a little more arc, a little less speed, and hopefully it lands somewhere within 20 feet of the basket if I miss and not 40 to 60 feet, which is how it was in the past. And let's be honest, nobody's making all those 40 foot comebacks. <laughs> so, you know, I just really want to be a more mature, smart golfer um, and know the right time to play aggressive. The next time you find yourself with an opportunity to hit a putt, um, what's, what are you going to tell yourself? What, 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 what mindset are you going to go into these opportunities with? Oh, I'm capable of doing this. I know that I'm one of the best putters. I can see it in the UDISC stats from previous years, and those are not 100% accurate, but they're close enough to get an idea of you know, who's a good putter or not. Um, I just got to believe in myself. You know, that's all it really takes. You know, when you walk up and you feel a little bit nervous, the putt just isn't the same. The, the hand trembles, the wrist does something weird, it falls out of the hand, it wobbles out early left, and you're just looking at it sometimes like, is this even my hand, you know? Uh, I just made five 60 footers in practice, you know? So also just getting the nerves under control. You know, I don't have a lot of experience of being in the lead at large events. When I was in my advanced women career, I won a fair number of events and it was, you know, it was still nerve wracking, but man, it's different when you're out here playing for money and your sponsors are expecting you to do things and you make invisible pressure on yourself. So, you know, I'm just looking to, to grow up a little bit and trying to get my act together and see if I can take home something elite. Um, let's talk about preparing for those pressure moments. Um, obviously, there's no uh, substitute for experience and being out there in those pressure moments over and over again and becoming accustomed to it. Um, but is there anything that you can work on off the course or is it just gaining these experience? I think it is probably a little bit of both and maybe working out some other 
creative shots that I don't normally use in scramble situations like overhands and tomahawks and thumbers. You know, I'm basically just a sidearm chip backhand, you know, player. I don't do a lot of those weird creative shots because my other ones I feel are fairly strong. But oftentimes I find myself in a position where um, I need something and I don't quite know what to do. And I never want to feel like that in the middle of a tournament. I, I usually walk up, I'm very confident, I got the disc in my hand before I get there. I'm like, oh yeah, I can get there like this. Uh, but, you know, walking up and going, wow, I don't even know what to do here. That's not how I ever want to feel. So I think just getting some more weapons in my arsenal, you know, that I can work with when the time is right will just help build some confidence that I can rely on in pressure situations. The The women's field uh, is missing a few big names this weekend. Um, we're playing in the woods, which favors your game. How much of an opportunity are you viewing uh, this event? Oh, I view every event as an opportunity for me. You know, I wouldn't play if I didn't think I could win. I'm that type of person. I always want to win. Yeah, it'd be cool to place top three, but really I just want to win. You know, I've yet to win an elite series, so I'm always looking for that. And you said it, yeah, we, we are missing some elite level players this weekend, some that are really good in the woods, some amazing putters. So obviously that plays... Uh, to my advantage, you know, those girls are not here and I am. So, yeah, I'm just going to do my best and, you know, believe in myself and know what I'm capable of and see if it will all come together three days in a row. Well, we, uh, we wish you the best of luck. Looking forward to seeing you play this weekend. And thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me.
we are here with a man who needs no introduction, Ricky Wysocki. Rick, thanks for joining us. How are you feeling out here in Delaware? Hot. <laughs> no, no, I'm feeling good. I was just coming off an off week last week. I uh, had a lot of back-to-back -back events, I think four weeks in a row for most of the top players. And, and so it was, a, it was a lot of tournaments in a row. It was a mental grind playing, playing all the courses we had to play, Northwoods and Idlewild and all those courses. So I needed a week off mentally, and I, and I got that. And so I'm glad to be back here uh, playing, playing in Delaware. I like this course. I seem to play well here every year. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to doing that and having a solid finish and give myself a chance to win. Well, the record certainly backs that up. You've, you've won out here at Delaware. You've also had a number of second-place finishes. Um, what is it about this course that, uh, that translates well to your game? Well, I think that I'm, I'm the type of player to where I can throw all the different shots, and sometimes it doesn't get showcased when you're throwing on golf courses maybe because it's just you're throwing repetitive hyzers, long, you know, just distance contest, which I can do that, and, I, and I've adapted my game to where I'm, I can, I can do, do that kind of play that kind of golf. But I, I play really well, and I feel like I thrive the most in courses like, like Delaware where you're having to shape sidearms, you're having to shape backhands. And uh, you really have to hit fairways, and, and, and when you don't, you have to scramble. And that's, that's the name of the game because you want to hit a lot of fairways, but the, the, the chances obviously say you're not going to hit every fairway. So when you go, go, do get off the fairway, you've got to be able to recover. So I do that really well, and I think I still can get birdies out of position, which I think saves those couple extra strokes per round that really set my, sets myself apart. Let's talk about your bag a little bit. I'm sure you're leaning on uh, some different discs than you normally would out in the big golf courses here. So what are, what are your key discs uh, this weekend? Well, I'm throwing a lot of like hyzer flips, like sidearms and backhand discs. So I'm throwing a lot of uh, like T-Bird 3s, destroyers, and uh, more beat up destroyers because I'm throwing like more straight lines. I'm not, I don't have the, the, the room to throw flex, you know, flex distance drivers or flex sidearms. It's more on a rope shots. And I like to throw hyzer flips when I'm throwing on a rope. And so that's, um, you know, I'm changing, making a little bit flippier discs, that's for sure. Uh, add a couple extra putters that are going to be long and straight and floaty and maybe ha hit some funky angles if you get out of position. So, yeah, I'm definitely adding a couple, a couple extra discs to, to complement those shots. 2019, uh, you had the lead late, and Matt Bell made a charge from the, lead, uh, from the chase card. Uh, something we don't see a ton um, at, at this level in disc golf. Um, Obviously, you've got uh, enough wins uh, in, uh, under your belt to, to not worry about too much about one event. But how much did you think about that that final round? And are you are you coming into this event with that on your mind at all? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you know a couple people asked me. There, you know, Matt. It was his first real big NT win. I think so. As as much as I want to win, it was great for him to see him succeed after you know a couple of weeks down after after the fact that when it all settled in. Um, but yeah, no, I think that's, you know, him winning from the second card is just, a, just a, a, you know, it shows how hard this course can really play. And so, you know, like you said, normally we don't, you don't see winners coming from the second card, but this course is so hard to where you can actually, you, you might see that, um, you might see a lot of flip-flop and a lot of separation, that's for sure. Uh, it's a type of course where if you're playing well, you can really separate from the field, but if you're not, someone can catch up quick uh, if, you're, if you're off the fairways and getting out of position a lot. So. Uh, that's, you know, it can go both ways. And, uh, you know, Matt, like I said, he's, he's a great player. He plays great in the woods and he, you know, it was, um, he was hitting a lot of great shots down the stretch and that's what you need to do to win. And so, uh, yeah, it was a battle in 2019. That's for sure. What, uh, what should viewers be looking for as far as your game goes? How are we going to know if Ricky is on, um, in the early going? Uh, good question. I think it's going to be a lot, uh, scrambles up shots. I think that's super important. Obviously, you know, every aspect of the game is, is important every week, but I think that, um, second shots and scrambling out of position shots are going to be the most important shot because, yeah, you're going to hit some fairways, you're going to miss some fairways, but uh, when you when you get out of position, you still have to advance the disc to go to the fairway or go to the basket and give yourself a chance. And uh, if you're scrambling, giving yourself a chance for, for par saves and birdie saves when you're out of position, you're going to gain those strokes when other people might not, and that's how you separate and that's how you uh, give yourself a chance to win come Sunday. So uh, scrambling is the name of the game this week for me. I think that uh, that's where I'm going to – succeed it's uh it's hot it's humid out here um how how do you balance um wanting to get a lot of preparation in with also conserving your energy yeah i i, I like to practice about this uh the same as i normally do i'm going to go home and take an ice bath cool off and uh, recover the muscles as quick as possible and an ice bath is a great way to do that and and so i know a lot of people have been talking and asking me about that but 
disc golf, you see a lot of professional athletes doing that. And, you know, after basketball games, all the top level athletes in the NBA, they, they do ice baths and that's because it recovers their muscles quickly to play the next day. Disc golf is the same thing. We're putting a lot of torque and a lot of strain on our muscles. If you can ice them, come back the next day, just as strong or stronger than the first day, that's, that's a win. And so, uh, you, so you can get, get get drained mentally and you know energy wise too from from the heat. So I think that that resets me in the way I need to come back every day feeling strong. So ice baths are going to be the name of the game for me this week. Hey Rick, just uh, one more real quick. You know, obviously National Tour weekend uh, this weekend. So I wanted to ask you about the 2012 Brent Hambrick Memorial. <laughs> uh, what was that win like for you? Um, first big one, and just kind of describe that that week for us. Yeah, so um, yeah, it was 2012 was my first real big, like you said, NT. I'm playing in my home state in Ohio back then, and playing with all the big names, Avery and and, and Felberg, and and I, you know, I don't even I don't think Climo was playing back then, but but yeah, there was just a lot of the top pros I'd looked up to, and I was I was playing playing against them, and I, and, and I ended up winning that tournament. So that kind of kicked off my national tour career in a, in a great way. And so I always uh, it was a bummer to miss the Hamburg last week. It wasn't an NT, but it was a big A tier. And uh, so I definitely pay attention, and that course means a lot to me uh, through the history of me playing and, and competing. So it's got a lot of history for me, uh, the, the Hambrick, but the National Tour as well. I've been playing it for, for a long time, and I have a lot of great memories, a lot of great courses, and great moments uh, that have formed me and uh, made the career path that I'm on right now. Excellent. Well, uh, one more question for you. Um, you've been out here for probably a couple of days practicing. How is your game feeling, and what are your expectations this weekend? Feeling good. I took a I took a week off and didn't really touch a disc just to reset the mind and and everything. And so, uh, kept playing a little bit of catch up with my game. To, uh, taking a week off is a lot uh, in the middle of the season, but I needed it. I needed to recover the body, and and so that that was the most important thing to me. Uh, so there's a couple things that I I think I can I can I need to work on, but I think that I'm a good enough player. I can uh, adapt and on, on the fly, and I, and I think that's why I play so well consistently. Is I can I can make changes and I can you know critique myself in the in the tournament and that and that's that's what matters is making in-game adjustments well ricky wysocki we're glad you're here can't wait to watch you play thanks for your time thanks guys glad to be here
we are here with Team MVP's very own Sarah Holcomb. Sarah, welcome back to Delaware. How's your week going? Oh, thank you. It has been hot. <laughs> very, very hot out here. <laughs> Feels like a lot like Idlewild. So it's been sweaty rounds and a lot of humidity. Uh, you are, you're known as one of the more proficient woods players on tour. How nice is it to be out here in the hills, um, threading, uh, threading fairways and hitting lines? Yeah, I absolutely love the woods. Um, it's just, it's so gratifying to, you know, envision a line and then hit it perfectly. And then the disc is in the middle of the fairway. And then, then you get up to your lie and you have another technical shot to throw. So it's definitely my bread and butter. Um, You've, you've done some work on the media side uh, this year, doing some commentary. Um, we are always struggling to show the glory that it is Woods Golf on camera. Um, as a player, how do you feel about trying to strike the balance between visually appealing disc golf and disc golf that we, that we remember uh, from the woods and, and all love to play? Yeah, um, I tend to be more on the side of uh, putting competition before media. So I want, you know, I really feel like courses should be designed for the best shots and the best disc golf regardless of how well it really shows in media production sorry guys but <laughs> i it's competition is more important than anything to me so um speaking of competition uh we understand uh, looking at the records you won your first nt back in 2011 at the king of the lake um, yeah up in tahoe tell us about that event um because it's, it's not around or at least it's not an nt any longer yeah and uh tell us about that win that was uh it was definitely a big kickoff i had just come off a big a tier win not too long before that and that was the first year i'd really gone out on the road um that particular event is really fun because you play um bijou zephyr cove and vista i think vista something anyway it's we played three different courses and uh, I remember being very nervous going into the last round and um, I managed to squeak out the win. Um, but it also, it didn't really mean, to me it, it was great that it was a national tour, but a lot of the heavy hitters in my division were in Europe at the time. So I kind of feel like, you know, I was like, ah, oh, I won, but you know, I might not have won if everyone had been there. Um, but then I followed it up that year with a couple more NT wins that where the entire field was there. So, um, but that one in particular, outside of it being my first win has my absolute was my absolute favorite trophy even to this day it's like this beautiful like quartz bottom with a hand-blown dragon and uh it didn't come with a box or anything and as i was leaving the parking lot it was sitting on my center console and i leaned over to get something and i broke it <laughs> before i even got out of the parking lot but the very nice lady fixed it for me so it's now sitting on my parents mantle it's interesting to hear you say that the top players were in Europe when you made your, your national tour breakthrough. Um, we were talking to Holly Finley uh, just a bit ago about her you know, um, desire to break through and win on a, in a late series event. How tough is it to get over that hump and what advice would you give to somebody who is really struggling to maybe make that, the, to get that belief that they can, they can close a, an elite series win? Yeah, it's tough because a lot of things have to come together, you know, especially when you're trying to break through you know, it's got to be, you know, you ha your body has to feel good. Your mind has to be in the right place. Um, you have to play well. And you also have to get some luck. And you also have to count on some of your competition not having a great weekend. You know, so um, I think, you know, as far as advice is just keep believing and just keep grinding it out and be patient because they'll come eventually. It's just a matter of, you know, grinding it out long enough that, that th all of those things come together for you to get that win. Um, how, how much are you able to, to lean back um, on your experience and your success uh, when it comes to, to getting that belief, even maybe during stretches where you haven't um, gotten as many wins as, as you have in the past? Yeah, it's, um, it's always a battle, you know, it's, the, it's always an up and, hill, up and down thing. Um, yeah, I just try to, you know, I try not to focus on the win is how I'm able to actually win is I focus on the shots in front of me and just take it one shot at a time. And, you know, sometimes I can play really, really well and get like fifth, you know, and sometimes I can play not so great and win, you know. So um, I think just not not focusing on actually like, you know, I got to win this, you know, put, not putting that extra pressure on yourself to get the W, I think is one of the keys that keeps me um, up the leaderboard um, even when I'm not winning. Um, we've seen that Delaware has proven an opportunity for players to get wins um, that maybe weren't the favorites coming into the event. Um, 
how do you feel coming into a course where you know it's going to be your skill and performance but also combined with with the luck of the course yeah i feel pretty confident about it i mean i'm used to um hitting lines in, in woods and i'm used to like you know it's a lot of recovery stuff and staying mentally strong and not giving up and not rushing things just because you threw a bad shot um, scrambling out of the woods, just knowing that, you know, don't, you know, don't try to force things, you know, like take, happily take a bogey when you're out of position, you know, or if you're out of position, you know, try to, don't try to get a birdie, you know, just pitch it out to a good spot, throw the next shot and know that, um, that's, that there's another hole ahead of you that you don't have to try to force things. Um, along with hitting lines, uh, being a predominantly forehand player, um, can you tell us about what advantages that gives you when it comes to scrambling, when it comes to finding lines through the woods? Yeah, I would definitely say being able to face my target is a very good advantage in the woods. And then also when it comes to footing out here, there's a lot of rocks in the fairway and there's a lot of times that you don't really have a good run up and you want to throw a standstill. In addition, we're expecting some weather this weekend. So in you know slippery conditions, this course is going to be very challenging to run up in the fairways. So I think being able to throw standstills sidearm is going to be very, very helpful. Um, and hopefully that gives me that little bit of advantage I need um, to get the W. Uh, as we're watching you play through the early, uh, early parts of this tournament, what should we be looking out for to know if Sarah's, uh, her game is on? Um, I would say my putting, it hasn't really felt very good lately. I've been working on it, um, but it's still, you know, it's, it, it comes and goes. So I think that if I'm hitting putts um, from inside the circle, that's definitely going to be an important um, indication that I'm playing well. All right, Sarah. Well, we wish you the best of luck this weekend. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.
right, we're here with Heather Young at the Delaware Disc Golf Challenge. Heather, first of all, how's it going today? It's going well. I just finished another practice round here, and I'm excited. Nice. This is your first time up here, Tyron yes, Hill? it is. Nice. All right, first impressions. So let's hear them. I like it. I think the course is fair. I feel like it. it's a good challenge for all parts of anyone's game. It's an advantage to have a backhand and a forehand, so I'm excited. I think it's good. You know, what's it going to take to, to put up a number that you want to put up this weekend? Honestly, I think it's just going to be maintaining a clean round for the whole time because this course is long. Like, you finish nine holes here, and you feel like you've already played 18 at another course. So it's just going to be keeping yourself from losing focus when you're getting tired. You just need to stay focused on throwing the best shot you can wherever you're at. Heather, you've, uh, you broke through this year um, in the DGPT Silver Series, um, and you've had some podium finishes at the elite level, but um, what is it going to take for you to make this next jump and, and to win at the elite series level? Um, I think it's kind of a mix of things. I think the biggest thing, though, is just I tend to have – two good rounds and then one round that's just okay i need to put three good rounds together to truly be in contention for winning which i think is doable i just need to make sure i need to make sure i'm always playing to win and not just accepting that oh a top finish is good i always need to be pushing for the next level um with with several of the top players uh, missing this th from this weekend's field and uh, being in the woods where control and putting is going to be paramount, do you, do you see this, uh, this event as an opportunity for you to make that breakthrough? Definitely. I think this is one of the events I've looked at throughout the whole year and been like, that's one that I think I could play really well at and probably win if I'm at the top of my game at that point. What's your process like um, when you pull up to, or maybe even before you get to an event like this where you've never played the course? Mm -hmm. um, how do you prepare, and uh, where are you at in that process right now? Are you, so if I've never played an event before, if there's coverage of it from a previous year, I usually watch it. I've watched coverage of this multiple times. And then also just talking to other players that have been here, it's a good way to kind of just learn anything major like, it's handy to know before you even start playing practice rounds. I've played two and a half practice rounds here. I feel like I know the course well now. I think it's just executing the shots that are required because you never end up in the exact same spots on any course. And then with all the rocks here, you get such weird ground play and kicks that it's just being able to use, trust your game and know from anywhere that you have a shot you just have to figure out what it is as you've uh, as you've been on tour full-time um, getting more experience every week uh, how has your game evolved and um, do you feel differently when you step out in that first tee than you did maybe a year ago I would say it's definitely made it where I'm just more comfortable at these events I remember early this year it was like I was a little more nervous than I expected just because I was it was getting back into elite events but now it's like I mean there's still pressure but it's more of like excitement to be able to compete not like oh this is scary um so yeah it's nothing that crazy with uh with more and more coverage coming online uh, every every week especially for the women's side of the sport um mm -hmm. have your friends and family been following you uh, from home and, and what's it like to to interact with them after having them watch you uh, play disc golf all year i enjoy it i think it's cool whenever somebody tells me that they've watched coverage and want to talk about it or even just like all the messages i get on facebook or whatever of people telling me congratulations or just that they watched I enjoy the more coverage there is because it's a chance to get to meet new people. It's a chance to get my name out more and grow my brand. Um, what, uh, what are some of the keys to your game this weekend? What should we be looking out for in the early going to know if uh, things are clicking for you? I think the biggest things for me will just be, well, I mean, always putting. If I'm putting well, I'm probably going to be scoring pretty well, but... 
I think approaches on this course because the fairways are wide enough that if you're not shanking your drives, you'll be somewhere in position. But it's actually taking that position and getting close to the basket that's harder at a course like this. Um, after um, we're not quite at the end of the season yet, but um, looking at the off season um, and all the experience you've had this year, what are you going to be working on and, and what's your process going to be like uh, during those few months? I think the biggest thing I'll be focusing on in the off season is distance in general. Um, my putting feels good. I know I can putt well as long as I'm putting in the work and being prepared all of the time. Um, I think it's just going to be, I throw far enough to compete at elite level events, but I don't necessarily throw far enough to make it easy to attack all of the holes. So that's what I'm going to focus on the most, because if you can reach everything, then putting is a huge advantage if you can make everything. But if you aren't, then you're putting to save par too often, which isn't necessarily as useful. Well, take us, uh, you may not have a game plan all completely developed, but what what do you expect that work to look like? How are you going to um, work on getting more distance? Um, I think the two biggest things will probably be working like with disc golf strong and doing exercises to just help tone and strengthen all of the muscles that you need for distance. But I think also... The biggest thing I've been told from a lot of different players for distance is I just need to be quicker and more explosive. So explosive training drills, everything like that. Um, give us a, a couple predictions um, for maybe yourself or just um, disc golf in general going through these last few events this year. Honestly, I don't know. I like all of the events that we finish with. I think they're some of my favorite of the year. I feel like every year somebody different wins these events. So I think it's going to be exciting. I want to try to be one of those new people to win these events. If you could, um, if you can make a deal uh, and wrap up your season, what, what would success look like for you? Oh, goodness. <laughs> Winning every event? <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I'm still at the stage where if I play well at every event, like if I play to my standards of playing well, I'm happy. If that means that I win an event, that's awesome. If that means that somebody else played even better, then I need to be able to grow to that level. But if I played well, then I'm happy with that. That's great words to live by. Heather, uh, good luck this weekend. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.
We're here with Team Prodigy's Natalie Ryan. Natalie, uh, welcome to Delaware. Uh, how are you feeling through these practice rounds? Uh, pretty good. Started off a little, uh, a little rusty, kind of trying to figure out the course. First time here, so uh, had to take a few minutes to kind of figure out the landing zones. But other than that, feeling pretty good now. You're from Richmond, so this East Coast golf has to feel pretty familiar. Uh, what are your impressions of the course, and how comfortable do you feel on these hills and in these woods? Uh, the hills are a little new. We don't have a ton of hills in Richmond. There's some, but it's not to this degree. Um, but the woods golf is very similar, so very comfortable there. Getting off the fairway is number one thing you can't do, so good there. Um, just keep it clean. Should be good. Um, I saw that you played your first um, Elite Series uh, event this month in, in, at Idlewild. Um, how was that experience, and, and what's it like to play on this uh, on the biggest stage of disc golf? It was honestly amazing. Um, I was super humbled a little bit at first, um, getting to know some of the uh, the other pros on my card. Um, but after that, kind of shook off the nerves of not playing around in a few weeks before that. So had to kind of get my mental game back to where it needed to be, and um, got better each day. So ended up playing playing all right. A little bit under my rating that tournament, but not too bad. Um, but managed to keep it good. Uh, for those of, uh, those viewers who haven't seen you play, can you just describe your game? Tell us about you know some of your strengths and, and, and your signature shots. Uh, so I have a very, very big arm. Um, I can easily throw about 430 uh, on distance shots. Um, my upshotting game, not so good, but I kind of favor the forehand there, so end up kind of doing a lot of big turnovers, stuff like that. Um, and then I can putt with both hands. Um, the, the, the big arm maybe is not going to play to your advantage uh, in these woods, but I can imagine putting with both hands will probably come in handy uh, from time to time. A little bit, but uh, you'd, be, you'd be surprised. Uh, I just finished up the practice round a little bit earlier today and had a couple eagle looks even in the woods. So if I can keep it clean off the tee and, and have a setup for some kind of, you know, big 400 foot shot in the woods, I can, I can get, I can get close. Uh, being new to the, to the elite series tour, um, what, what are your goals for the rest of the year? And, and what are your goals uh, going in the next few seasons? Um, goals more or less just to cash from here on out. Uh, if I can hit the top 10, that would be perfect. But, um, I don't know if I'm in a position yet to quite, take down any of these wins. We'll see how that goes further into the season. Um, my, my upshotting and scramble game just isn't where it needs to be. So I know what I need to work on this off season. Um, beyond that, just, just going to try and finish out as many as I can. Hopefully I don't get hurt. What, uh, what should we be looking for in your game? How are we going to know, um, if you're playing well and, and, and playing at the level that you expect? You'll know I'm playing well if, um, if I'm not, taking a ton of time on each tee. If I step up, look at the shot, remember exactly what I need to do, throw without thinking, you, you'll, you'll know. It, it'll be in the middle of the fairway every time. And um, beyond that, it shouldn't be a too big a deal. Uh, are you going to be, um, what events are you playing through the rest of the year? And are you planning on touring full time next year? I would love to play full time next year, but uh, I'm finishing the pro tour as far as I can. Um, I probably won't get invited to the Pro Tour Championships because I started probably too late to get enough points. But I'm playing everything up until that point. Um, and then after that, I'm playing a few A-tiers just to kind of keep things fresh, maybe get a little more money for next year. Um, as far as next year goes, um, it's really going to come down to kind of how this year goes. So <laughs> I'll have to keep everyone updated there. Uh can tell us a little bit about your, the response from friends and family back home seeing you play um, at these big national events. It's been great. Uh, I've received a lot of positive feedback the last few days after everyone watched the, uh, the coverage last week. So it's, it's honestly been surprising. I, I expected it to be a little iffy, half and half, you know, um, but I haven't received any negative comments yet, so I'm, I'm pretty happy. Excellent. Well, we're glad you're here and can't wait to watch you play this weekend. Best of luck and thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you.